Good evening and welcome to the Pastor's Study, the Faith Community Church in Geneva. Tonight I'm going to be in the book of Philemon. Real easy to find. Go to Hebrews and turn back one page. And it's only a page long. But it's going to be Philemon uh, chapter 1. And tonight I'd like to speak about faith versus foolishness. And how hard it is to detect which is which often. Often we want to walk by faith and it's something foolish. It was our idea, not God's. Uh, and then on the other hand, we might think something's foolish because God gave us an idea. So how do we know when it's faith versus foolishness? And sometimes that's really hard to know. But when I thought about that, I thought about people with foolishness, uh, the powerful make-believe versus reality. And a lot of times we can fool ourselves. We can have a mindset. We go to Scripture. We find Scripture to justify that mindset. And then we try to live and it doesn't happen. But God didn't give us the mindset. God didn't give us the thought. And so it ends up being foolish. But how do we know ahead of time? We have to keep testing and seeing what's of God and not. But one of the Scriptures talks about, Show me the faith, or by thy faith you will know them. And so my test to me is, show me the proof. Show me the fruit of what God has told you. Otherwise, show me the miracle. Not tell me about it, not tell. Show me the miracle of God in your life. And we all have miracles. We have large miracles. We have small miracles. But show me what God has placed in your mind, how you received it, how you work it out or ha are working it out, and test to realize that it is a faith. See, Jesus was often mocked. And, for example, when uh, the daughter was dead, and everybody knew that the daughter was dead, and they laughed him and they scorned him, and he had all those that did not believe to leave the house because he had been with his father. He was filled with the Holy Spirit, being the Son of God. He knew that faith would override the natural. And what seemed foolish to people, God was very confident. He put everybody out. He wanted to just believe, bless those that believe. And so they laughed him to scorn. And we see that in Christ's life often, where they were mocking him, they were laughing. And even on the cross, if you be the Son of God, come down and save yourself. And then save us, ha, ha, ha. And, and it looked like they won. It looked like that was total foolishness until he rose again. So all of Christ's life was confirming his life, his truth, by signs and wonders. And so in our life, we need to be able to prove what Jesus Christ has said to us, how the Spirit of God has led us. And when Jesus said this, and you have the date written down, or you have the verse written down, or the word of knowledge written down, and you date it, and you tell others about it. And you might want to only tell the very few faithful, the person who can keep it to themselves. Or on the other hand, you might want to tell everybody. Because in Hebrews, the Lord showed them and persuaded that they were the chosen children of Israel and they were going to inherit the land. They embraced it and they confessed it long before they received it. Well, that was faith, but it certainly looked like foolishness. And then... Also, while I was reading scripture and uh, I just jotting down in a one-liners as I was in different books and uh, Paul talks about uh, how shall they hear without a preacher or faith comes by hearing the word of God. That's why we need to be in church. That's why we need to hear the word of God. See, faith comes by hearing, not just by reading. One author says maybe it's more important to hear the scriptures and application than it is to read them. Well, I don't know about that because I know it's through reading the Scripture and praying the Scripture that God speaks to us and shows us what we're to do, what we're to believe, what we're to receive, what direction we're to go in, and then we walk that by faith. And so people ask me all the time, well, how, how do you make it work? How does all this work? It works by knowing God, knowing God. And when you're in Scripture and you start seeing the qualities and the characteristics of God, then we set our minds on the truths of God, not on things of the world, even though we have to live there, and, and that's the majority of our life. But behind it all, we've set our mind on the truths of God. 
And one of the scriptures says, And the saints were refreshed by thee. Matter of fact, that's Philemon 1 7. For we have great joy and consolation in your love, because the hearts of the saints have been refreshed by you, brother, or you could add by you, sister. And so I'll read that again. For we have great joy and consolation in thy love, because the hearts of the saints rejoice in thee, brother, sister. And I think he added that brother right there at the end just to get your attention like, hey, I'm talking to you, sister. Hey, I'm talking to you, brother. When we can look at our lives, or better yet, have somebody else look at our lives and say, we have great joy and consolation in your love. You love the saints. You love the brotherhood. You love the body of Christ. And we're happy about that. We rejoice in that because the hearts of the saints are refreshed by thee, brother. And so in our lives, uh, that was a challenge that I have, and I'm going to mention that briefly Sunday. I got that verse, and I started, as I was reading, and it's called Under Preparation of the Saint. And then I realized the consciousness of the saint. Wait a minute, God is saying something to hear, to me. And then now how am I going to receive it? How am I going to work it out in my life? And so what I want to do and work on while the Spirit of God has me on that top topic is I want to make sure the hearts of the saints are refreshed by what I say, by what I preach as a pastor, by what I say as a brother in Christ, what I say... Are the saints refreshed because they've been with you? And I believe that's a test to realize God is working in you to work through you. But we also see that when it goes back to faith and foolishness. When it's something that God wants us to believe and receive by faith, then our hearts will be refreshed. You realize, praise God, he just spoke to me. Praise God, he's with me, he's leading me. Praise God, this is, I have this truth from God himself. He confirms it in the scripture. He ministers by the spirit of God, and that refreshes me. And so consequently, you can realize that you have great joy and consolation in his love. There's that word love again. Pops up all through the scripture. The book of love. Who wrote the book of love? Jesus Christ presented the book of love. And so in our lives, whatever we're doing, we're walking by faith. We should be able to be comforted in the love of God. We should comfort others in the love of God and the hearts of the saints will be refreshed. So God bless you tonight. It is love, love, love. Encourage and be encouraged by God's love and his word. The Lord bless you and your family.